Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. In today's video I'm going to be doing the best and worst book series of 2020 book tag created by my friend Mara over at Books Like Woe. one of many end of year videos you're going to be getting from me, but I think this is a really interesting tag because it lets you reflect on series. And sometimes books and series don't end up on all my best and worst of lists, but it's interesting to look back on what were the series that I read over the year, what were the series that I finished, what ones did I DNF, how did that go? And I think this is a really nice tag to be able to do it. Like I said, Mara created this tag, so I will link her channel down below along with all of the questions if you want to do this as well. One thing that I want to note before I dive into the questions is as I was doing this, I was going back and looking at, okay, how many series did I actually complete? in 2020, I read a lot of books, but how many series did I finish? And the answer is I finished a total of eight series. And this only includes finished series, not series where I'm caught up, but it was actually more than I maybe thought it was, which was interesting. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and get into the first question on this tag. Question one, what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? For this, I actually have two answers I wanted to give. One is the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. I really love it. Come Tumbling Down came out in 2020, and I've actually already read the 2021 release coming out in January across the green grass fields. So this series is still in progress. She's still writing books in it but it's one that I really love and one that I'm caught up with. And the other one is The Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Network Effect is the first full-length novel in the series that came out. I really, really love all of these. I think it's such a great series and I am caught up and ready for Fugitive Telemetry, which we're getting in 2021. So these are the two series that are still in progress. They're still writing books. I am caught up in them and I really love both of them. Question two. What is the best work in progress series that you are still catching up with? I had a few answers I could give with this, but I tried not to repeat answers for multiple questions too many times. So what I'm going with here is the Books of Babel series by Josiah Bancroft. I have read Senlin Ascends, which is the first book. I really, really loved it. I have purchased the next two books in the series and very much want to catch up with them next year. It is still in progress. The fourth and final book is set to be published sometime next fall if all goes well. So it's another one that is still in progress that I have not yet caught up on. And this is a series that I just love a lot. It's such a unique world and such a smart book that has puzzle pieces you can put together. It's got great character development. I'm just a big fan and I hear that the character work gets even better in books two and three. So I'm definitely looking forward to continuing on with this series. Question three is what was your favorite first book in a series this year. I've got to say 2020 was the year for really amazing first books in series and there were several things I could have selected for this but I decided to limit myself to two answers. I have one adult title and one young adult title. For the adult title this is hands down the best adult series starter I've read this year and that is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I loved this so much. It's epic multi POV adult fantasy. It's very fast paced. The world is super interesting. It's inspired by ancient Mayan and Aztec cultures. I loved the characters. It starts off with a bang. It's got one of the most intense first chapters I've ever read in a book and I just think this is a fantastic series starter. I'm really excited to see where it goes. Then my pick for YA is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This blew me away. I read it in the second half of December and I was like, well, there it is. <laughs> like, probably the best YA debut of 2020. I'm so glad I finally got around to reading it. I really, really loved it. It's interesting because it's been talked about as a retelling of the Arthurian legend, which kind of yes, kind of no. Basically it uses Arthurian mythology as the basis for the magic system and the structure of this secret society magical organization that exists here, but I would kind of call this like Cassandra Clare meets Octavia Butler in terms of writing because you're getting this really fun YA adventure that is magic integrated with the real world with shadowy magical secret organizations and political scheming, killing gross demons. And so like there's definitely some crossover to the Shadowhunter world that Cassandra Clare has created in terms of the type 
of story it is, but I would also compare it to Octavia Butler because of the more serious topics that this is tackling and the way it does it so well, the fact that it is centering a black teen girl, and like this book just, there's so much here, so much to unpack, and I really, really loved it. So uh, yeah, definitely two best series starters that I have read. I look forward to seeing where this series goes and this one as well. Question four is an interesting one. What is a first book in a series you read this year that you think should have just been a standalone, not a series? There were a few different answers that I could have given for this, but the one that really stood out to me is a book that actually got pushed back to 2021. It's a book that I really, really liked. I had an advanced copy of it, but I don't think it needs to be a series and it looks like they're gonna make it a series. That is, this is not the Jess show. Again, I really liked the book. I think it's a great book, but like, does it need to be a series? No, I think it has a very satisfying ending. I didn't know when I finished it that it was set to be a series, but apparently it is, and I wish they would just leave it as it is, because I think it's perfectly fine on its own. Okay, we're gonna get into some tea here. <laughs> Question five, what is your most overhyped series? of the year. Um, okay, so I have two answers for this, again, an adult and a YA series. In terms of the YA series, don't hate me for this, but I'm gonna say Caraval by Stephanie Garber. And actually, this is another one that I kind of wish had just ended with the first book. I mean, I was excited to read on in the series because it ends on kind of a cliffhanger, but I did not like second two books in the series. Um, so Finale, I was really not a fan of. That's the one that I read this year, and I just found it to be really disappointing. I think all of the things that I loved about Caravelle, in terms of the gamification and some of the story structure and certain aspects of the characters, totally went away in the next two books, which was kind of a bummer. And I know people really, really love the series, but I just don't get it. I thought the first book was great, but like, I I, I don't know, but I know there's a lot of love for it. In my opinion, it, it was overhyped. And the other one is the Fallen Empire series by Grace Draven. I've read both of the first two books in the series and it's not bad, but I heard glowing reviews of it and I just didn't think it was that great compared to other things I've read from her. The first book in particular, um, Phoenix Unbound, I think Phoenix Unbound is the first, the first book. I didn't love all that much. I think I gave it like two and a half or three stars. The second book in the series was a lot better. I want to say I gave it four stars, but I, I, I don't know. That first book especially there are people raving about it and I'm like, I just don't see it. I think some of her indie published work is better. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I thought it was overhyped. Question six, what is the series you DNF'd this year? <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna give a couple of answers. Again, this is one that I have two answers for, an adult title and a YA title. Uh, the adult title is one that I read the first book because I felt like it was something I should try. I see why some people maybe love it. I was not a fan and I am not continuing with the series and that is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Yeah, I mean, if you wanna hear my detailed thoughts on this, you can check out my Goodreads review. I think I go into more detail on my thoughts on the book, but this, I was not a fan. <laughs> I know a lot of people really, really love this series and I, I do think on some level, maybe the first book in particular was somewhat a product of its time because it did come out kind of a long time ago, but reading it for the first time in 2020, I was like, no thank you. <laughs> so I have definitely DNF'd that series. The other one is much more of a bummer and I've had people ask me if I think I'm gonna continue with the series and the answer is no, I am not. And that is the Children of Blood and Bone series by Tomi Adeyemi. <sighs> Man, it makes me so sad. I really loved the first book. Children of Blood and Bone was was one of my favorite books of the year and the year that I read it. And then Children of Virtue and Vengeance happened. And guys, it was like one of my least favorite books of 2020. One of very few books that I gave one star to. I don't know what happened. It like ruined the characters for me. I didn't like the direction that it took. I had a lot of issues with that book and so no I am not planning on continuing on with the series. You know some people are like well maybe she could redeem it with the third book but I just 
I think I'm done. Maybe in if she writes another series in the future, I might be open to trying it again and picking it up depending on what it is, but I just... I am going to be DNFing the series, unfortunately. Moving on to some more positive, <laughs> more positive questions. Question seven is, what was your favorite series finale of the year? And I think for this, I'm gonna have to go with The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This was so good. Um, I feel like this entire series, the Devabad trilogy, was so well executed. Um, I gave five stars to each and every book in the series, which is pretty impressive. There's not a lot of authors who can have that kind of a series and just like nail it each and every time. And Empire of Gold for sure was a very strong finish. I was entirely satisfied with the way that it wrapped up the story structure. I love the choices that she made at the end, even if some of them were a little bit heartbreaking. I just thought this was such a great series finale to a really fantastic series all together. So um, yeah, really impressed. Question eight, what was the biggest cliffhanger you had in a series this year? And again, this is one where I have two answers for you. The first one, we're bringing back a book from a previous question, Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Oh my goodness, the cliffhanger. <laughs> This ends on a huge cliffhanger and I am sort of desperate to have book two and see what's gonna happen and where it's gonna go. This was a huge one. And then for YA, easily the biggest cliffhanger was in Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. I loved this book. It was so good. It's this very dark YA fantasy debut that's kind of a love letter to unlikable female characters. It's got a super slow burn sapphic romance very slow burn. Um, some people wanted more from it, but I just loved everything about it. It ends on a huge cliffhanger and I finished it. I devoured this in like a day and was like, oh my god, where's book two? I need book two now. So easily these were the two that I finished them and I was like, why is book two not available? <laughs> I want to read the next book. Uh, so definitely those were the biggest cliffhangers for 2020. Question nine is what is your favorite spinoff series that you read this year? And I have to say I didn't really read a lot of spinoff series, but the one that I did read I really loved, so this was an easy answer. And that is The Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare. I read book one, Chain of Gold. It's one of my favorite books that I read in 2020. Really, really loved it. In my opinion, this is the best book she's written. It's my favorite of the books that she's written. And of course it is a spinoff series in the Shadowhunter world. This one takes place after the Infernal Devices. So it follows the children of the main characters in the Infernal Devices series. And I loved it a whole lot. So that was easily my favorite spinoff. One that I have not yet read, but want to read soon is the new Alyssa Cole series, The Runaway Royals, which is also a spinoff, but I haven't read it yet, so I can't put it on this list hopefully soon. Question 10, what is your most anticipated next book in a series that you read this year that will come out next year? There's a lot of second books in series coming out next year, but the one that I decided to go with is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. The next one is A Desolation Called Peace. I already have an e-arc of this. I'm planning on reading it probably in February, and I'm really, really excited for this one. I loved this book and this is one that it's funny even though I didn't give it a super high rating I mean it was like reasonably high I think I gave it like four and a half stars but it's one that's really stuck with me and one that I've continued to recommend to people quite a bit so I really really loved this it's science fiction but it's a lot more about politics court politics and intrigue it's very character driven which I love and I just thought this was such an incredible debut. I'm really excited to see where book two goes. Question 11, what is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read in that series this year? So with this one, there are a few different things that I could go with, but my answer is gonna be the Poppy War series by RF Kuang. I have not yet read The Burning God, but I am excited to finish it out, like nervous, because <laughs> I know it's gonna like destroy me, but excited to finish it out. I have really, really loved what I've read in the series. I read book two this year. It was phenomenal. And based on what I hear, I'm sure the final one is going to be really, really good as well. Question 12 is, what is your favorite series that you finished this year? And for this, I'm gonna go with the Brothers Sinister series by Courtney Milan. I don't own all of the books yet. This is books one and two, but I've read all of them, including the novellas. And I 
love them a whole lot. I've kind of, excuse my children in the background. So I had read The Duchess War a little while back and then this year I finished up the entire series including the novellas and I just love them. Every single one of them was four or five stars for me. I love Courtney Milan. This is definitely one of my favorite historical romance series and probably my favorite series that I finished this year and read a lot of the books from. So that's that's gonna be it. No, you need to go out. I want to say hi to them. You want to say hi to them? Yeah. All right, come here. One, two, three. <laughs> say hi. I have a secret to tell you. You have a secret to tell them? Yeah. Okay, what's your secret? They can't hear you. Let's play airplane. You want to play airplane? With them. With them? Yeah. How would you do that? Yeah, I need to clap at Adam. Oh, I don't think that's going to work. So no, 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 no. That's going to hurt the camera. That's not. Uh, no. Bye. But I love you. <laughs> you love I them. I want to hug you. <laughs> you want to hug them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hug. <laughs> there you go. All right. Say bye. Well. I had to tell you. I had to tell you. You already did. I have another secret. No, 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 no. You don't no, uh, so mommy have a... I had a light stick so, we, so you guys can see. I have a light so they can see? Yeah, you have both lights so we can, re so we can really see. So we can really see. That's true. All right, say bye. Bye. See you later. And we have a window. Okay, go Joe. Go see Ruby. Bye. Sorry about that. Anyway, so I've kind of become a Courtney Milan fangirl this year. I really, really love her books. Great, smart historical romance with smart heroines and strong heroes who are not alpha males. I am just a fan. This is definitely my brand of historical romance and I loved the Brother Sinister series. Question 13. What is your favorite episodic series of the year? And for this, I'm definitely gonna have to go with the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. I have read a whole bunch of books in this series this year and I'm really enjoying them. It's another one too that I would say there's like this later question about series that you've finished that you think are greater than the sum of their parts. I can't use it as the answer for that question because I haven't finished the series yet, but this is definitely one that I feel like that about where even though there's occasionally books where I don't love the romance as much as other books, as a whole, I really love the series. I really love the world and the characters that she's building. And um, Caressed by Ice is probably my favorite of the bunch so far. I think this is book three in the series. I read it this year and I am now on book 12. I've read 12 of the books so far. So I've read a lot of them this year. They are episodic in that each book has its own plot and follows a specific romance between a couple but there's also larger plot lines that carry through it. So easily gonna be the Side Changeling series. Question 14, what is a series that you finally bailed on after holding on to it for a long time? So I don't have a great answer for this because there aren't any series that I've actually been holding on to for a long time and bailed on. I think Mara probably does more of that than I do of like reading series and then deciding she's like maybe done with it. I will say though, there's a series that I DNF'd after holding out a lot of hope that the second book this year would be good and make it worth continuing and it wasn't, at least in my opinion. And that's the Camelot Rising series by Kirsten White. I read the One of Your Deception last year and liked it okay and was excited to see if it was going to go where I thought it was going to go. And then I read the second book this year and just wasn't really a fan. So I'm going to be not continuing on with that series. Question 15. What is the series you were most surprised that you liked this year? One that I started recently that I was kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I don't know that I was sure going in if I would or wouldn't like it, but I ended up really being into it and buying book two. And that is the Faithful in the Fallen series by John Gwynn. I read Malice in December for a reading vlog. It was for like a Secret Santa project. I probably wouldn't have picked this book up if it wasn't for that project, but I'm so glad I did because I really enjoyed it. This is kind of a, a like for me at least, a bit of a comfort read. It's like a classic epic fantasy story. I really liked the characters. I was very invested in it by the end of the book. And yeah, I this was 
a pleasant surprise for me. Question 16. What is the series that you meant to catch up with or finish this year that you didn't? I mean, there are a few. <laughs> But the one that I'll mention is the Winter Night Trilogy by Katherine Arden. Although I am finally getting my act together to make this happen, I did a reread of The Bear and the Nightingale a couple months back, and I am planning on putting the next two books in the trilogy on my TBR in the winter of 2021, um, so early in the year. So I'm working on it. I had planned on reading this like months and months ago and just never got around to it. <laughs> So I am finally going to make this happen. These books have been on my TBR for like two years. <laughs> so it's, it is about time. And lastly, question 17. What is a series you finished this year that you think is greater than the sum of its parts? I mentioned earlier I can't use the Sai Changeling series because I haven't actually finished it. So instead we're going to go with another series I did finish this year. I don't know if there are going to be other books in the series. There's definitely space for it, but currently there's nothing else planned. So we're going to call it finished. And that is the Malice Domestica series by S.A. Hunt. The first book is Burn the Dark. I actually read all three books this year and I think they all they all came out this year too. The first one came out in January and then um, so Tor kindly sent these to me and so I've read all of them. My favorite was the first book I think because the types of horror in the other two books get a little intense for my taste. So I didn't give super high ratings to the entire series but I would say that it's greater than the sum of its parts because I love what it's doing as a horror series, even if the specific types of horror that it gets into sometimes are a little much for me. It's a horror series that's subverting a lot of problematic tropes in the genre. It's taking on homophobia and toxic masculinity and racism. It's set in the South. It's got queer characters. It's got disabled characters. It's got... It's just doing a lot of really, really cool things that I think we don't see enough of in the horror genre. And so I think this is such a fantastic series and one that I would definitely recommend to people who like more gritty horror, just because I think there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the series. So that's going to be my pick for question 17. There you have it. Those are my picks for some of the best and worst of series that I've read in 2020. Overall, I think it's been a really good reading year. I've started a lot of series that I'm excited to continue. There were a lot of great first books that I'm like tentatively looking forward to reading because you never know for sure what you're going to get with a book too, but ones that I'm looking forward to reading in 2021. And yeah, I just think this was a really great tag. Thanks to Mara for creating this. It's kind of a cool way to reflect on your series reading for the year. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me something about your series reading for the year. Feel free to answer some of these questions yourself or tell me about series that you've loved or finished this year. Let me know what your series reading has looked like in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.